good morning students uh, now we are discussing about consolidation and uh, last lectures we have discussed about the introduction of consolidation the difference between consolidation and compaction and spring analogy model today i am going to discuss about consolidation test okay and this consolidation test is also known as soidometer test and it is used to investigate the one dimensional consolidation behavior of fine grained soil that is this consolidation test is conducted uh, in clay soil and it is done to find out the one dimensional consolidation behavior of that soil okay this is the uh, experimental setup or laboratory setup here there is a ring and the sample is uh, filled in this ring okay place sample in ring and we are applying load on top of the surface then measure the height change when we are applying the load there will be consolidation because this ring ring will be placed in a water bath so uh, the water will be expelling out through this uh, soil particles so uh, consolidation will take takes place and there will be height variation or decrease in height so we have to measure that height change this height change is measured using a dial gauge which is which is attached with this ring okay uh, and and then we are repeating with another new load okay initially we are uh, conducting the experiment for a particular load and uh, doing the experiments that is uh, for that load we are uh, marking the dial gauge reading etc then uh, in the next experiment we are doubling the uh, load or repeat repeat for a new load and doing the same experiments this will be explained later and this is the uh, outlook of this consolidation test laboratory consolidation test an undisturbed soil sample of 25 mm in height this uh, soil sample height is 25 mm this is in a ring shape we are placing the soil sample in the ring so the sample will be in the shape of a ring and the height is 25 mm and 75 mm is the diameter and it is confined in a steel confining ring and immersed in a water bath okay and the soil sample is placed in the ring and it is placed in a water bath and on the top and bottom of the soil sample there is porous stone in order to permit the flow of water because uh, we are testing consolidation consolidation means flow of water or expulsion of water so for that we have to place porous stone in order to uh, allow the uh, passage of water so uh, at the top and bottom of the soil sample there is uh, porous stone and this is the dial gauge this dial gauge is fixed on the top of the ring in order to find out the height change or uh, strain using the dial gauge we are measuring the dimension change it is subject to a compressive stress by applying a vertical load vertical load which is assumed to act uniformly over the area of the sample the load is assumed to uh, to be acting uniformly over the area of the soil sample this is the setup several increments of vertical stress are applied usually by doubling the previous increment that is firstly we are uh, doing the experiment for about 10 kN per meter square load that is we are applying a vertical load of 10 kN per meter square and uh, the specimen is uh, allowed to consolidate that is we are uh, doing the experiment for 24 hours for that particular load that is 10 kN per meter square and for one day or 24 hours we are uh, noting the dial gauge reading for, uh, for every time interval that is uh, after 0 0.251, 2 0.254, 6.259 etc up to uh, 24 hours okay and uh, plotting uh, and uh, sorry and noting the dial gauge reading okay then we are doubling the load that is uh, firstly we have done for 10 kN per meter square and in the next next ex experiment we are applying 20 kN per meter square and in the third experiment we are doing 40 then 80, 160, 320 and 640 kN per meter square likewise we are doubling the load okay that is the procedure so for each load we are uh, noting the dial gauge reading for 24 hours okay one load we are keeping for 24 hours and noting the dial gauge reading uh, the two way drainage is permitted through porous disc at the top and bottom Okay, since uh, porous stone is at top and bottom, two-way drainage is permitted. The vertical compression of the soil sample is recorded using highly accurate dial gauges. So, using this dial gauge, we can note the vertical compression or displacement or height change of the soil sample. 
for each increment the final settlement of the soil sample as well as the time taken to reach the final settlement is re uh, recorded that is for each load uh, we are noting the final settlement of the soil sample and also the time taken to reach the final settlement we are noting the settlement and time for each of the increment okay and this uh, this the uh, experiment that is we are applying uh, vertical load and noting the dial gauge reading for each load and uh, in the next experiment we are doubling the load and this procedure and all is in Aurora textbook page number 260 you just uh, uh, read that uh, portion that is page number 259 it's in page number 259 that is this consolidation test then for this consolidation test there are some assumptions that is load distribution is uniform that we have discussed that is load is assumed as uniform and also the stress distribution is uh, same for uh, all the height it's also uniform and there is no lateral deformation and the area of sample section is unchangeable the area is not changing at uh, every minute area is an uh, area of the section is unchangeable and the solid soil is uncompressible that is the solid volume is constant the solid particle cannot be compressed the uh, area which is for uh, which is uh, undergoing uh, compression is the void okay that is uh, there will be solid and void the solid part is incompressible that cannot be compressed there, there will not be any change in the solid component and for void, void, void will be compressed because water is expelling out during consolidation. So these are the assumptions of this consolidation test. Mm. A laboratory consolidation test is performed on undisturbed sample of fossil. That is, it is usually conducted on clay soil that I have explained. The soil sample is assumed to be representing a soil layer in the ground. Okay. This uh, conventional consolidation test is conducted over a number of uh, load increments. That is, we are doubling the load in each experiment. The number of load increments should cover the stress range from the initial stress rate of the soil to the final stress rate the soil is expected to experience due to the proposed construction. That is, we are applying the load such that this load will be applied in the field. Like that, we, we, we are comparing the field situation to that of laboratory. Likewise, we are doubling the load. Okay. In the field, uh, there will be load due to uh, buildings or any other uh, filling, etc. Okay, that load, that corresponding load we are uh, experiencing through the uh, lab, in the lab. Okay. The increments in a conventional consolidant test are generally for 24 hours duration and the load is doubling, doubled, doubled in the successive increment that I have discussed. The main purpose of consolidation test is to obtain soil data which is used in predicting the rate and amount of settlement of structure founded on clay. So that is the main purpose that is if we are constructing a building on clay initially we have to find out the settlement which is to be uh, experienced by that soil uh, by that clay okay in the case of clay there will be settlement so we have to find out the rate of settlement whether it is uniform settlement or differential settlement so that we can construct a building or we can uh, uh, design a foundation for that type of soil so initially for designing the foundation we have to find out the rate of settlement for that we are doing this consolidation test on that particular soil okay then we can discuss about the test result of this consolidation test uh, so first result is based on change in height and change in void ratio relation that is by applying uh, the external stress there will be change in height and there will be change in void ratio when stress is increased the void ratio will get reduced Okay, so we have to uh, find the relation between this change in height and change in void ratio. Okay, for that, <coughs> the average vertical strain. What is strain? Strain means change in dimension by original dimension that you have studied in MOS. Strain means change in dimension by original dimension. Here, the dimension which is changing is the height. Okay, initially, this is a saturated uh, clay. Uh, total height h0 initial height h0 when we are uh, applying the load the height will be reduced it is the soil will be consolidated so there is a reduction in height that is delta h it is marked here so what is the strain uh, average vertical strain is delta h by initial height h0 okay it's clear then next uh, we can discuss about the void ratio change in void ratio for that uh, consider the saturated soil system this is the solid and here it is void Okay, and assume the solid volume, volume of solid S1. Initially, assume, assume that volume of solid S1. 
so it is marked as volume of solid as 1 and volume of void what is volume of what is void ratio void ratio is equal to volume of void by volume of solid here volume of solid is assumed as 1 so uh, this volume of void is equal to this void ratio okay so uh, this like uh, this type of problem i have uh, done in first module that is uh, void ratio is equal to <coughs> volume of void because volume of solid is assumed as 1 okay so here volume of void is e naught that is initial volume then after consolidation there is change in void ratio that is the soil is compressed but there is no change in volume of solid that we have uh, assumed we have discussed in the assumption that is uh, during consolidation there will not be change in volume of solid volume of solid will be constant so one the change is due to the variation in uh, void okay so this is delta e volume of solid is same as that of initial so what is the vertical strain strain means change in void ratio by initial void ratio okay change in volume by uh, original volume so here change in volume is delta e okay delta e divided by initial volume 1 plus e naught so here the vertical average vertical strain is strain is equal to delta e by 1 plus e naught so we can equate equating the two expressions for average vertical strain these, these both are average vertical strain so there is two equation one is based on delta h and one is based on delta e so we can equate that is delta h by h naught is equal to delta e by 1 plus e naught delta is the change in void ratio e naught is the initial void ratio then delta H is the consolidation settlement, H naught, or H naught is the initial thickness of clay layer. This is one of the important relationship. This is the, uh, one of the important uh, result of consolidation test. That is change in height by initial height or initial thickness is equal to change in void ratio by initial 1 plus initial void ratio. This is important relationship. Okay. Next, uh, uh, we can discuss another uh, test result of this consolidation test. That is, we can plot a graph between void ratio and effective stress. Okay, so uh, if, as the effective stress increases, void ratio will get decreased. But in the initial phase, the relate, uh, relatively great change in pressure only results in less change in void ratio. For uh, high change in uh, stress, there is only small change in void ratio because the part of the pressure is used to uh, expand used to compensate the expansion when soil specimen was sampled initially there is an initial settlement that is immediate settlement so this pressure is used for compensating the initial uh, load so there is not much variation or much change in the void ratio but after that <coughs> there will be sudden increase in the or great rate, rate of change of this void ratio okay this is the variation and this can be uh, this variation that is the variation of uh, uh, the deformation with time can be explained for different stages of consolidation that, that is we have discussed that the consolidation is taking place in three stages that is initial consolidation primary consolidation and secondary consolidation so in this graph that is deformation and time the general shape of the plot of deformation of the specimen against time for a given load increment is shown below from the plot we can observe three distinct stages that is this initial stage stage one this marked as yellow this is the initial stage and this is uh, known as initial compression and it is usually caused by preloading that is just after load application there is a uh, adjustment of the soil particle and it's immediate settlement this is marked in the yellow portion and it is the initial compression and in the second second is the primary consolidation which is uh, which is uh, which is the uh, expression in the primary consolidation expulsion of pore water takes place therefore there is a uh, very high variation or primary consolidation will takes place for a long time so there is uh, this is the longest portion because primary in primary consolidation water is expelling out so for this expulsion of water it the time time is very high it may be taken uh, 10 years or 100 days like that so this primary consolidation portion is very vast okay very lengthy uh, uh, the time is uh, very high the time taken to complete the uh, this uh, primary consolidation is uh, very high comparing to other two stages so this is the primary consolidation stage excess pore water pressure is gradually transferred into effective stress by expulsion of pore water and last stage is secondary consolidation and it occurs after complete dissipation of excess pore water that is after completely dissipating the excess pore water this stage occurs and this is caused by the plastic readjustment of soil fabrics Okay, and this is the uh, uh, stage stage three that is secondary consolidation. So also another test result of this consolidation. Okay, so uh, you just go through the textbook and read the 
procedures and uh, initial setup of this consolidation test and uh, also study the relationship between void ratio and change in height that is delta h by initial height h naught is equal to delta e by 1 plus e naught and also the variation of uh, deformation with time okay thank you